Thus far, concerning sediment transport, we have been talking about stable channel design and predicting when sediment particles will move. We're now going to go into the calculation of sediment discharge. And there are three types of methods for the calculation of sediment discharge. One does the bed load only. Two, the suspended load only. And three, there are methods for calculating the total sediment load. We're going to, in this video, do a calculation of the total sediment load. The reference by Hicken, River Geomorphology, Chapter 4, Sediment Transport, provides for the explanations of bed load and sediment load. So you should have read that prior to actually doing this example. The variables that are used in sediment discharge are listed here. Now, not all the variables that are shown here are going to be used in this example. Some of them will be used in the next example when we talk about sediment discharge using Yang's method. But as you can see here, the small q would represent the volumetric transport rate of sediment per unit width of the stream. Now this means it would be volume, so it would be, for example, cubic meters per day per meter of width. And then you can see the subscripts of the B, the S, and the T referring to the bed load, the suspended load, and the total sediment load. G in this case stands for the dry weight of the sediment transported per unit of stream width per unit of time. And likewise, the G sub B, G sub S, and G sub T refer to dry weight of the sediment. The sediment discharge, capital Q, is not the flow in this example. It's the volumetric sediment transport rate across the entire cross section, similar for the capital G. The other variables we have pretty much used in the previous examples, with the exception of C sub T, which is the total sediment concentration. We've used these before, the hydraulic depth, the top width, and in this video, the effective top width will be defined. The equations are the sediment transport totally per unit width would be the sum of the bed load plus the suspended load. The sediment transport per unit width weight-wise, dry weight, would be the transport of the bed load plus the transport of the sediment load. The total dry weight of sediment would be equal to the volumetric dry weight of sediment times the specific weight of the sediment. And then you can see the other equations here we will use in this example. Equation 10.8 for the dimensionless particle size we have used previously. Additional equations, you have to consider the fall velocity. This is necessary so to note the sediment particles are actually going to settle out or if they're going to continue in suspension. So this is equation 1010 in the textbook by Sturm and U star C is the critical shear velocity. You can see it's the dimensionless critical shear stress equation, which has been rearranged. The shear velocity is calculated as G times Y sub N times S sub F for the wide shallow channel. And then if it's not wide and shallow, the hydraulic radius replaces the normal depth. Okay, here's the example. A stream, rate, a stream has a flow rate of 5 cubic meters per second and an effective width of 10 meters. 
at that flow rate, Q sub T, the volumetric sediment transport per unit width is 0 0.0006 square meters per second or cubic meters per second per meter of width. And it says determine G sub T, C sub T, Q sub T, and capital G sub T. Starting out with the small G sub T, which would be the sediment transport dry per unit width of the channel. So G sub T equals Q sub T times gamma sub S. Inserting the numbers into the equation, we get that the dry weight sediment transport is 15.6 newtons per second per meter of channel width. Next, we want the total sediment concentration, which is the specific gravity of the sediment times the density of the water times the volumetric sediment transport rate divided by the flow per unit width, Q sub W. Inserting the numbers, over here at the point 0.5, the flow rate was 5 cubic meters per second, and the effective width was 10 meters. So 5 divided by 10 gives 0 0.5 meters squared per second. So you can see there's density of water, specific gravity of the sediment, volumetric sediment flow rate, water flow rate per unit width, units conversion factor, another units conversion factor. So the total concentration, I should say the concentration of the total sediment load is 3,180 milligrams per liter. The total sediment volumetric flow rate is Q sub T times B sub E. So just inserting the numbers, it's 0 0.006 cubic meters per second of sediment is going downstream. And likewise, the dry weight total sediment going downstream is simply G sub T times the effective width or 156 newtons per second going downstream. Now assume that the sediment discharge and the flow rate are constant for 24 hours. Determine the volume and dry weight of the sediment which has passed the cross section. The volume would be the volumetric sediment transport times the elapsed time. So we put in the numbers and you see the volume of sediment that goes by this cross section in 24 hours is 518.4 cubic meters per day. The weight of sediment would be determined similarly except using G sub T times the elapsed time. So we take 156 newtons per second and multiply by 86,400 seconds per day and you can see that gives a total sediment dry weight of 13,478,400 newtons per day. If you are challenged by a Newton, you can convert this into a pound force. And so you can see you have 3,030,216 pounds per day. If you put that into tons, U.S. tons that is, it's 15, 15 tons per day. Now I presented this example so you could get an idea that when the sediment is moving downstream, the quantity of sediment which passes by 
is quite large.